first up, a reminder. Uh, all right, first up, a reminder. Uh, March is going to come up really fast, so if you haven't already subscribed to Adabox, go to adabox.com. Um, we have the least amount of open subscriptions out of all the times we've done Adabox. It'll go fast. So I am uh, doing what I was told to do by the team and reminding everyone, if you want one, subscribe. First up. Okay. We've got a bunch of USB-C cables. So this is kind of the last type of USB-C cable that we had not carried. It's a type A, like rectangular, which is common. A lot of computers still have type A. And the other end is USB-C. So great if you have a device that is a USB-C uh, phone or, or electronic device or a feather, like we have the um, STM32 F405 feather comes with USB-C and then, you know, plug it upright, turn around, plug it the other way. Got a couple different cables. This is our little shorty cable, super cute. But we also have it in uh, one foot long, which is cute, but a little bit less cute perhaps. And then uh, we also have one that is three feet or one meter long. So three different options. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive because, of course, there's copper. We got ones with nice, uh, thick um, power lines, and the data lines are a little thinner. So uh, really good for any case where you have a standard USB-A and you want to use USB-C. Okay, next up. No, those are all the cables. You want to do um, any additional... No, these are just all the cables. ...photo showing? No. Nope. Or you're cool with all that? It's basically the same cable, different length. All right. Okay. Moving right along, we've got this kind of cool plastic octagon robot chest. Yeah, I wasn't so sure about this, but then once I got it, I was like, you know what, this is actually kind of sweet. Yeah, we've so, tried everything, and so this is one of the few that we're stocking. Yeah, we like this because, first off, it's really big. Um, a lot of chassis are either really tiny or, like, really huge, but this is large but light So because it's plastic, not metal. Um, it's very strong, though. It's, it's, it's quite thick plastic. It's got tons a mounting option. So like no matter what you got, is an Arduino, Raspberry Pi, Jetson Nano, Cricut, you'll be able to attach it. You can put uh, TT motors on the side, but there's, you can actually put like motors in almost any direction. There's like tons of motor and servo mounts. There's a servo mount here and there's like servo mounts on the side and um, making a, make a great little uh, two-wheeled robot as you can see here. Um, and then uh, you, know, you can use Meccano wheels if you want. You can have it go in different directions. Lots of space to mount battery packs um, or sensors or robot arms, what have you. And it's a great price. Um, another nice thing about it is because it's plastic, it's easy to machine. Need more holes? Drill them out, cut them. You can do almost anything you like to this uh, chassis and it'll stay strong and in one piece. Okay. Good chassis. Next up. We have uh, the Microelectronica Click Shield. This will take a feather board. Um, we haven't, don't have any clicks, so uh, you know, it looks like it would work with any feather. And um, you plug two click boards on the side. These are proprietary kind of format uh, from Microelectronica uh, called Microbus. And um, there's pins on. Yeah, we zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, so another chassis. That, that chassis, chassis was, was so, so big. big, we had to back it up. So chunky. Um, so you can add, uh, they have like a couple hundred different click boards of different sizes. They go up to this wide. Uh, so it's a, it's a good match for um, a feather. Uh, so you put the feather in the center. You can power it over USB-C and it has like a, look, like a little buck converter that gives you the three volt power or you can um, power it directly from the micro USB either way. Don't know, maybe you want to use a USB-C connector, that's fine. Um, and then uh, over here, um, you can plug in two different ones and then they have all the pinouts um, are different. So you'll have to go to the data sheet to see where like the int pins are, are routed or maybe on the back they'll tell you. Yeah. And um, I think if you have click boards and you want to use them with a feather, this is a great little adapter. It's really well designed, very, very pretty board. Um, I will say, as far as I can tell, click boards don't come with Arduino or Python library code. So you will have to either find library code or write your own. Like they don't provide that kind of yeah. software support. So that's the, that's why we don't really carry them is they don't seem to have Arduino or Python code for them. And we kind of don't sell anything unless there's driver code that we can get people started with. So that's a trade-off. That said, if you have clickboards, you like using them, you have a feather, yeah. this is a great way to get them working together. We also want to support the feather e ecosystem so people are able to, like they're able to have more sensors and more things for their hardware and 
it's feather compatible. Yeah. So. Cool. Next up. Okay. Next up, we have a uh, little potentiometer that comes with a cable attached to make it really easy to do plug and play. It's a Stemma cable, so it's a. Um, once you go to the overhead, because actually the demo, that doesn't have the demo on it. Um, so we have the potentiometer, the cable. In this case, the cable is just plugged into a breadboard. But if you have one of our boards that have a 3JST pin connector, we have three pin to three pin adapters. Um, this just changes the uh, color when I twist the knob. Basically, you just want like an easily mountable wire potentiometer. It's a, you know, a very easy thing to get going with. Um, especially if you don't want to do no soldering whatsoever with your project. It's a nice 10K potentiometer, super easy to use, very uh, self-descriptive. Okay, next up. Uh, we have a version of the 5-volt fan that we've stocked for a while. Um, this version has a uh, Molex Pico blade connector. The other one we had had a, uh, a 1.1 uh, inch 2.5 millimeter pitch connector so you could plug it into a Raspberry Pi header immediately or any other kind of um, single board computer if you want just powered off of the, the 5 volt power. This one has a Pico blade because we're going to be designing some boards that have the fan built into it and so we wanted to have a plug and play little connector that was very nice to surface mount. It's the same fan but if you want to integrate this fan into like a full device um, it's easier to find surface mount connectors for this cable end connector than for the other one. Otherwise, it's the same fan. Okay, and the star of the show tonight, besides the community, our customers, and you, Lady Ada, is the new board, Clue. It's yes. Here. Get a Clue, you got a Clue. You can get a Clue now. Well, we just sold out, so we're gonna put in some yeah, more tomorrow. Yeah, will be more, that's why, so by the way, that's why the code's gonna go a little bit longer, because we'll have more in shortly. Yeah, we, so. we have a bunch, we just, we put in half before the show, and then we kind of sold out. We'll put the other half. It's here. Uh, like 100 tomorrow. Beautiful silk. Great sell screen by Philby. So this is prints on the back, super cute. Little fingerprints on the buttons. Yeah. Logo so if you got fingerprints on it, you can just say like, yeah. "Oh, that's on purpose." Um, and it even has the little inset uh, numbers and prints on the front. So if you want to have it like the the zoom micro in bit. On that. Yeah. Okay. See, so I gotta zoom in again. Yeah. Um, so this is the clue. Get it there. Um, so it's, it's got a micro bit shape, but it's a different chipset than the micro bit. So on the back, it's got an NRF52840, which is a one megabyte of flash, 256K of RAM, 64 megahertz processor. So it's like four or five times faster, at least, than the NRF51 on the micro bit. It also has a ton of sensors. So you've got a microphone, you've got a barometric pressure sensor, a temperature and humidity sensor, a gyroscope, accelerometer, magnetometer. Um, there's also a little buzzer on the back, which I think I'll keep. I wasn't sure if I was gonna keep it, but no. Maybe I'm thinking of keeping it. Uh, it's also got a NeoPixel, two megabytes of flash memory storage, so you can data log to it or use it for CircuitPython, um, a Stemma or Quick connector, so you can use this with Grove sensors, uh, Stemma connectors, or, or Quick sensors. And devices, if you want to attach a GPS, plug and play, add that. It's got the same standard reset button you know and love, a uh, little regulator here. And then, um, of course, the really nice thing is it's got this beautiful one point uh, three inch 240 by 240 color TFT where normally on the micro bit you'd have five by five LEDs 25 LEDs is great but in this case you've got 240 by 240 pixels that's full color um, you can like play GIFs on it you can plot data you can have this is just a simple demo where I have it printing out you know if I if I cover up the light you can see the the light sensor changes oh yeah and then on the front there's another couple sensors this is a light and gesture and uh, proximity Sensor to also do uh, pulse. And then um, I have two bright LEDs here. Uh, if I press this button, they turn on. And these LEDs are so that the color sensor has um, white light reflecting off the object that you're trying to measure. And then if I press this button, it'll beep. A little beepy. So you can do a little uh, beeps and buzz. So we put this all together, and this is the alpha version. Um, you know, we plugged it into a bunch of different devices that. Uh, are microbit compatible and, and basically as long as we wrote the code in Arduino or in CircuitPython, um, all the pins match the same function. The analog pins are the analog pins, the I2C pins are I2C, SPI or SPI. Of course, it's not the same chip, so it's not going to be identical, but um, we got at least all of the functions that were on the microbit and none of these are shared. 
So on the micro bit, all, almost all these pins down here are shared with the matrix. Um, but in this case, none of them are. They're all completely available for use. The only two pins that are shared are the I squared C pins are of course shared with all the I squared C sensors, which is not unexpected. Um, all this, uh, you got a little battery connector. We put a regulator on here so you can use any battery from three to six volts. So you don't have to worry about um, alkaline versus rechargeable. You can use any battery you like pretty much and it will safely regulate it down to 3.3 volts. You can still use alligator clips on any of these pads, but what we like is, you know, a lot of the things that people attached on to a micro bit are already built in, like the, the buzzer or NeoPixel or all the sensors or the microphone or, you know, having a plug and play I squared C um, sensor or, uh, you know, white LEDs or a display. So it's all built in. This makes it more expensive, but I think that's okay. People, I think, will start with a micro bit. And then as they're like, okay, I want to do more, I need more sensors, I want to do machine learning with TensorFlow, I want to run CircuitPython, I want to do more advanced projects, um, you can upgrade to the Clue. And yeah, and the accessories that you have with Microbit work. Will still work. And it's a familiar form factor for a lot of people, and it has all the benefits of CircuitPython and Nordic's NRF52840. Yeah. So uh, we have a lot in store for this board and... Uh, so far this is just the alpha. So yeah. it's at a reduced price because we might change around some of the sensors. I like this sensor set, but you know, we're gonna do more experiments. If it turns out we need to change one of these sensors, we might. So just be aware that things may change. It might not. Um, so far our alpha hardware, we haven't made yeah. a lot of changes, but it is something just to be aware of. Not, you know, not a good idea to get this and just assume like, I'll be able to get 500 and they're exactly identical and every pin is exactly the same. Yeah. Um, that said, I'm pretty confident with this design. Um, so check it out. Another thing to watch out for is there is no scratch or make code support at this time. So you can program this with Arduino IDE. We have Arduino Core for NR52840. We've had it for years. Yeah. And you can use it with CircuitPython. Um, yeah. So those are the two ways to program this is it. Cutting edge. Cutting edge. Make code does not support this chip yet. We'd love for it to, but it's just not, there's no ETA. We think it will eventually, but don't get this with the assumption that you'll be able to use MakeCode with it. Uh, it yet. doesn't exist yet. 